Lost Caverns of Ixalan is completely pumping. Let's talk about what made this set so successful and what I'm a little bit worried about. Well, what is going on everyone? Welcome back to Kitchen Table TCG. My name is Louie. I hope you're having yourself a fantastic day. It is Monday before Magic Fest Chicago. I hope I will see some of you there at Magic Fest. I am so excited to hang out uh, and play some games and do some videos and, and just share that experience with you. So be looking on the channel for that content uh, throughout the weekend and uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday next week. Cannot wait about it cannot wait about it, cannot wait for it. Today we're gonna chat though about Lost Caverns of Ixalan. I know as a store owner, as a YouTube creator, I'm supposed to be pumping the new set to get you to buy it, to get you to think about it, but instead I wanna focus on a set from a couple sets ago and talk about why it is so successful, give you some insight that I am seeing, and then tell you some of the things I'm, I'm worried about and afraid of. So first off, let's talk about where this set is. Currently, Lost Caverns of Ixalan collector boxes are climbing into the 265 to $270 range. Uh, and from a distribution perspective, uh, we are limited to two boxes a week, basically. Uh, it is incredibly difficult to get this product, uh, and it is wild. Um, and then set boosters are sitting about 125 to 130. And I can tell you from a store owning perspective, I know I have a small store in West Virginia. It's not like some major area or whatever, uh, but from my perspective, this set has been flying off the shelves. We cannot keep set packs in stock. Uh, we all are constantly restocking on the collector packs. Uh, it is absolutely wild to see how active the consumer is at purchasing this product, which is a really good sign. And I kind of had this thought of like, why is that? There's no serialized cards in this set, right? There's no like real chase. Like you can, you kind of anticipate now in Magic the Gathering that the chase is the serialized card, but there's no serialized cards in the set. So why are people just going after this so heavy? I wanna talk about that a little bit. Um, first off, I wanna get into the singles on this. Now, this is a little bit crazy. There's a lot of cards going into this, but I wanna make a point here that it is across the board successful. There is across the board a lot of really big successes in this set. From reprints, you get Cavern of Souls going from $150 to $600 on these kind of alt arts, and then the regular version is still sitting at you know $20 to $30. Um, you've got the Mana Crypts going from $175 all the way up to $800, the big one selling for $3,000. You've got a crazy amount of expensive cards there. But then you have these new cards that have come in, right? These new cards like Roaming Throne, uh, and the gods are all selling for five to twenty dollars. So you have success in both the reprints uh, and the new cards. You got box toppers in this set, which is absolutely wild. The box toppers are still selling. I don't understand how the box topper premium is still going up. You know, Chalice of the Void is a sixty dollar card. There's not that many slots there. From a store perspective, cracking open boxes, you basically get a rebate of an average of like ten to fifteen dollars on your booster box because of these box toppers. It's absolutely absolutely crazy the amount of reprint equity uh, that they built into this set. But then you got those gods, you got the, the roaming throne, you've got a lot of cards there that are holding on their own. And then you've got the, the special guests too. I mean, it's absolutely wild. I want to get into like the EV. I don't think there's possible anymore to figure out the EV of these boxes with all the different variants and all the different, you know, flashy things that you can pull or can't pull. But the EV is crazy and it is positive, I believe. And everybody is opening it and having a fun time doing so because there are cards that people want and need and the set feels good. Now, if you compare this to murders at Karlov Manor, this is where things get really interesting. Um, you know, when you compare this to murders at Karlov Manor, it just doesn't feel as good. You don't have the reprint equity. You don't have the big chase. You know, they're trying to do all these gimmicky things with the serialized cards, but you're having serialized cards of the, the top card in the set that is selling for significantly less than non-serialized reprints like Cavern of Souls and Mana Crypt that are in Lost Caverns. So it's a really weird dynamic here that we have um, where I don't feel like magic understands understands that what the consumer wants isn't just some flashy number on the card, but what they actually want is cards that make a difference in the gameplay. 
I'm not here for like the game piece army or anything like that. I'm not here for that, that attitude of everything should be cheap. But my point is that people want cards that work in the game. That is, that is the serialized cards don't matter because the cards aren't fun to play and people want things that are fun to play. And people like to add cool variants. Those mana crypts are, that's why people are opening up collector packs in my store is because they want to find the mana crypts. They want to, they want to bling out their, their deck and the mana crypt value compared to an old mana crypt is similar. Uh, it's a similar price point uh, at the lowest end mana crypt. So it's fun. It's good. Um, now, this is where I want to get a little bit speculative. We've seen this before. Um, we have and we've seen this before and we've seen this recently, semi recently, where a collector box and a set box together get to the point where the price point seems what I would call successful. A hundred, a two hundred and sixty-five dollar collector box is a perfect price point, in my opinion, uh, for a collector box. Uh, from a store perspective, there's good profit to be made there. I think from a consumer perspective, uh, that means that there's value in the cards, and so it's worth buying, and and that's why it's two hundred and sixty-five dollars. I think from a from a large a holistic standpoint, um, a set box at one hundred and twenty-five to one hundred and forty dollars is a pretty acceptable price point for a consumer given the other world that we're living in and how much it costs to get a, you know, a loaf of bread and that kind of stuff. Um, and so I think that's a pretty safe and healthy marketplace. But we saw this with Kamigawa Neon Dynasty. Uh, Kamigawa Neon Dynasty felt a lot like this feels, where we are seeing um, the, the box price float into those price points, the success of the singles market, and the and people, you know, you had Boseiji, you had these new cards that people wanted, and it was really, really good. And then what happened, there was no serialized card, so Wizards decided to do a absolutely massive restock of the collector box, and it never recovered. It never recovered financially. I, I ordered, you know, a couple of cases. I have a ton of Neon Dynasty co collector boxes and the market never recovered. It never picked it up because what happened is the price of the singles tanked so low that the EV wasn't there for people to pick them up. And it didn't, there was no reason for somebody to spend the money buying Kamigawa because they were going to just lose their money. And so this is my fear with, uh, with Lost Caverns. And if I was a consumer, this would be something I would be actively watching and interacting with my LGS and, and interacting with the, the, you know, trying to ask my uh, the LGS owner, hey, can you get Lost Caverns? Is Are they out still? Are they still on limit? That kind of thing. Because as soon as this thing goes the way of a full-on restock, I think you're going to see the price of a lot of this stuff uh, collapse, particularly not, maybe not as much the reprints, but a lot of like the, the cards that are uh, the roaming throne, the gods, the stuff, like, maybe the caverns that are a little easier to pull, that kind of stuff. It's going to erode the value. Now, here's the question, and this is the biggest, everyone's wondering 2024 Wizards of the Coast, are they learning? Are they making adjustments to print runs? Are they, you know, are they anticipating? Do they want the things to be valuable? This would be the perfect set to prove to us as consumers and store owners and, and, you know, players, this would be the perfect set for them to say to us, no, we actually want there to be a secondary market that has value. Because if they don't restock this, if they don't reprint it, if they don't put out more collector boxes, if they don't Kamigawa Neon Dynasty this, then this is gonna, we will know. <laughs> like We will know that that's not, like there is less than a hundred boxes available today, this morning on Monday at distribution. They, they are almost out of everything. And so we will see if this becomes like the first more modern-y, I guess, in the last two or three years, successful $300 plus uh, collector box, or we will see a massive restock that happens. And that will be the telltale sign, in my opinion, on does Wizards of the Coast get it? Do they want to reduce the supply or are they just saying that? Do they want to, um, you know, make it so that boxes have value or are they just saying that? Is it all hearsay? And so Lost Caverns of Ixalan, I think is going to be the, the set that defines uh, Wizards 
adjusting or not adjusting the print run. So it'll be a lot of fun to watch. Uh, and it's really interesting, without the serialized cards, they can do that, right? Because of these new sets, they have to set the print run, and then the question is, are they holding boxes back? Are they dumping more boxes in the landfill? Uh, you know, with um, with murders at Carlisle Manor, we can still order boxes, like there's no shortage of boxes because the demand's not there. They have to print probably the same amount of boxes, but they can't restock that because of the serialized cards. Here, they can restock this as much as they want over the next couple of years. So it'll be very, very interesting to see if they do that or if they choose to worry about the print runs. Hopefully you have yourself a fantastic day. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Why is Lost Caverns of Ixalan successful? Um, and do you think it'll be uh, reprinted? Have a great day. Be kind to the people around you. We'll see you again next video. And maybe we'll see you at Magic Fest Chicago.